All right, good morning, how do you all? Another fine video from the Minimad Scientist Club. So today we're going to go through the stomp. In particular, the strangeness of the stomp as compared to other MIDI devices, because the stomp, as you can see, back here, has this little EXP 1 and 2 or foot switch 4 and 5. And this is a simple TRS tip ring switch connector. And the stomp internally is built so you can connect a two button switch there. It's an analog switch. And what you've got is basically two switches. Think of them as two little flags, lights, red and blue. What happens inside this switch is you're interrupting current or you're sending current. You're basically sending a pip. So pip, pip, that's FS5, pop, pop, that's FS4. When this receives that little signal, it says, hey, somebody's whacking my foot switch four or five, which here obviously don't exist. And you can tell it what to do. Now, to do that, Double click there, go one over, global settings, and you've got foot switches up top here. So you can do stomp selects, you can zip over here, you see FS3 is set to tap tuner, FS4 I've set is preset down, FS5 is preset up. Now, the way the MIDI works is this. This is set up so that you can do this without a MIDI controller. All you need is a TRS simple momentary dual switch thing, which you can get from Mission Engineering, you can get from Mosky, it's all kinds of things. You can build one for 30 bucks. Easy. It's simple switches and a bit of wiring and a bit of resistors. It's no, no big deal, but it's super limiting. So let's talk about MIDI and CCs and all that stuff. What you want to do if you're first coming up with your stomp is bring up the old manual. In the final pages of the manual, you can see all these MIDI CCs written here. Now, that doesn't make any sense to you. A CC is a control change. And what it is, is basically on a MIDI controller, you set up something As a little flag. Think of it as a flag. So it's a flag with a number on it. The number is the number of that change control. So you're saying, hey, blue flag. Blue flag can mean CC, let's take one, da 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 da. Next foot switch mode. CC 71, value of four. So if I say, hey, blue flag, CC 71, value of four, what that does is Here is your mode. If you click view, you get mode. That's one click. This doesn't map, unfortunately. And every time you page over, you're changing mode. So that is snapshot mode. That is stomp mode. As you can see, the stomps are there to be assigned. That is preset mode. So now you can hit these and go up and down through presets. That's one way. And this is another way to view it. These are the numbers of your presets. So you can hit both of these and go up and down. Now that's a lot of kerfuffle, coin an English phrase. So let's go back here. What I do is, I, you really want to think about what you're doing here. What I do is I set this up so that tap tempo remains active because it gives you a lot of information that will change to blue if you have an external link. If you're using delays and stuff, you really want this. You may think not so much now, but trust me, you will want this at some point. And anything that's giving you multiple colors and stuff, keep it. It'll save you a lot of hassle. And look at the window here. Everything you need, you've got your preset is there. Your blocks are there. You can barely see them from afar, but you can see them. And you've got your snapshots up there. If you want to change, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. 
and you've got CCs where you can jump to snap mode or you can set up extra commands to go to snapshots, but you want to think about this. And I put this in first in this video because most of the time, if you're anything like me, you just run ahead, jump in, get stuff working, and then you figure out, hmm, maybe there's a better way to do it. And you have to redo everything all over again. So think about this first. What do you need? What do you want to do? And the things that I would say you really need are the ability to go up and down through presets, control snapshots, and here you can control multiple things. So remember that. With a snapshot, you can set up any number of actions to take place and you step through them. With the foot switches, you can do individual things or you can set it to turn on two or more blocks or whatever you want. You've got two of them left. If you use a looper, the internal one, which is really good for testing, leave one of these free as that does the multicolor thing like this and it's really useful so let's go into it cc's up the top here you have mini cc one and two for the expression pedals 49 through 53 for one to five now remember this is expecting one of two ways you can either get a two button switch which is non-midi and that means you can't connect expression pedals or you can split it, but it's a lot of cabling and, and faff. And here we're talking MIDI, so let's go through MIDI. If you're setting these up, because it's, it's built like this where you've got five pedals that could be non-MIDI, they've also mounted to MIDI. So what you have to do is to get, say, a preset up and down, there's two stages. One, you're firing from your MIDI controller. Hey. This is a mini CC 53 with a value of 127. 127 is on, zero is off. Just think of it as digital. Fully on is 127, fully off is zero. You go back in here, step over, global settings, bum, bum, bum. And you've got your foot switch selections. You can change that to any of these things. And the only way to do it remotely would be to say set preset up to FS5 and set preset down to FS4. You've got to do that in here and then save. Boom. So now when you send a 53, CC 53 127 from your controller, it's going to go preset up. When you send a 52, it's going to go preset down because you've just told it to. And remember, you've got to tell everything in the Helix what to do. Right? Another important thing is this. Scroll over the top here to MIDI. There you see MIDI base channel. Now, the default is one. And what happens is any box that's running MIDI stuff is listening to one of 16 channels. The default is always one in these things. I would suggest you change that because you want an address, okay, digital address for this thing. So I put my helixes on four. I've got other pedals on two, on five, on three. And that way, as they're listening, they ignore everything else that's coming through. And it says, okay, channel four just activated a CC 53 with a value of 127. That's Turn on, preset, up or down, whatever you want. So, the controller is just sending a number. It's sending a flag that says, hey, I'm a number 53 on channel four, go. This listens for, hey, it's number four. Hey, it's a 53, okay, we gotta go preset up. Now, okay, boom. That's how your MIDI CCs work. The fact that you've got these here, all these MIDI CCs are already engaged and saved. So the stomp will listen to all these and do exactly that. And it won't do anything else because those are baked in. So what if you <clears throat> want to do something else? Scroll over here, and you remember, you've got to go through all this stuff. Just keep scrolling over it. There's all kinds of ways. If we go back to a preset, and we'll make a new one. 
Okay. New preset. Change the view. Bugger off. And I'm going to select, I don't know, distortion. Doesn't make a difference. Pick anything. There's your DSP. Now you can assign that, hitting there, bypass assign, controller assign, etc. Bypass assign is simply on or off. Now that's set to none. You can set it to any of these five switches. Remember those? Or expression pedals. And then you run out of room. So you're thinking, well, where's the MIDI come in? Ha, huh. scroll over. Turn on MIDI in. Now here, you want to pick ACC that has nothing to do with that long list. So, next page, blah, blah, blah. 80 and above, you should be good. So if you set this to 80 or 81, write these down as you're going because you don't want to be double assigning stuff. You could also click learn, but do it the hard way. Put in a CC80. Now on your controller, make a pedal, a foot switch, give it the number 80, CC80, and assign it values of 0 and 127. When you click a CC80, control change 80, it's a little red flag. Boom. Think about it like that. Send it to channel 4. This is now listening. Hey, flag on 80, number 4, 127, I should turn it on. If you hit it again, and it's, you set it to a toggle so it goes between 127 and 0, the next command that comes in is a 0. Same value, same CC80, and that switches off. That's how you do bypasses. Y'all should be fairly simple. So hit save these two twice and you're good to go. Now if I had an 80 and hit that, that would go on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off at infinitum. This is how you get beyond your FS 12345. This can be very useful. All these other ones, as you see here, are the additional controls for, say, the looper. If you want to activate these, you want to put in 60, and the values that come up, you want 0 for overdub and 127 for record. You want 0 for stop, 127 for play. You can assign these individually or to separate foot switches. Do what you want. Really no big deal. So I hope that helps. That's how you set up MIDI control changes on the stomp, and you really want to think about how you're doing it.